We want you to have nothing on your mind other than Jesus Christ. So whatever problem you have, throw it out your mind today. Just go like this, folks. Outside. Outside. This Jesus time. This time when we focus on Jesus, it's about Him. To God be the glory, honor, and praise. I want you to say to the, to the enemy, get out of my mind. I'm worshiping Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. And, and, and before we do that, I'm going to ask that you go to somebody you're not seated next to. You. Tell them, I'm so glad you're here. So go to somebody you're not sitting next to you and may God bless you and bless you today.
things in your life. I don't know, there are many people who they're used to church as usual. I don't want church as usual. I want the testimonies of the city being healed. I want to hear stories of how God turned it around. It looked impossible, but God fixed it. And, and, and I want to talk to you today about the spirit of expectation because God is a fixer, but he's cooperating with us so that we can, in tune with God, be fixers too. That we can do what he's doing and that he can manifest his presence through us, using us in our places, in our spaces, whether it be in our families, in our, with our homes, on our workplaces, wherever we are, that we are the manifestation of God's presence. The spirit of expectation. Give me point number one. Now faith. Faith precedes all life. So we see in the passage that God's faith brought into being everything that we see. God's faith. God thought it, believed it, said it. The power of the Holy Spirit brought it into being, and it is. Everything that's visible, it came from what was invisible. 
faith proceeds life. So God's faith brought into being everything that our eyes can see. This is very important for us to know because then it goes on to explain that it was by faith that Abel offered a better offering to God than Cain. And what is this saying? That Abel's offering was an offering of faith. It was saying that but because Abel, his offering was a faith that believed in God. It was a faith, uh, it, it, it was a movement in faith. And that's how God moves. Everything about God is belief coupled with action, coupled with power. And, and that was the difference between Abel's offering and Cain's offering. Abel offered unto God in faith and Cain offered unto God outside of faith. So God favored Abel's offering more than Cain's. And get this, all of our actions ought to be actions that are done in through faith. The Apostle Paul said, whatever we do outside of faith is sin. You got to understand this. What this means is any action outside of belief in God, the action that God is doing is a sinful action, which means it's a deadly action. To move outside of faith is death. So because Cain's offering was not an offering in faith, the next step was to offer murder. The everything we do, so uh, Dr. Tony Campolo with those WWJD uh, braces, what would Jesus do? It's kind of a, a question that ought to be in every action. Am I doing what Jesus would be doing? What would Jesus be doing? He would say, he would be saying, Father, the works that I do, you do. So, Father, am I? I want to be in accord. He would be seeking the Father to know what to do. And he wouldn't do something that the Father wouldn't tell him to do. If we're just doing something out of desperation, if we're just doing something because we don't, we don't know, I just got to do something. That's not... <coughs> That's not faith. Okay, so we want to be moving in faith. This is because faith precedes life, which means it precedes, precedes every action that we can perform. God's faith made it so that we could be here. So everything we're doing ought to be in line and in accord with God and His faith, what He would want us to be doing, how He would want us to be moving. Help me, Holy Spirit. Then he goes on to say, Enoch, by faith, was taken away. Enoch had so much faith, it was on another level. Now, Jesus would go on to say that if you have the faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Now, I want you to consider, we like to... Uh, make that a metaphor. I want you to consider this flesh being the biggest mountain <laughs> that we ever are going to have. Enoch's faith was so big that the mountain of the flesh, the sinful flesh that is always desiring against God was removed and God just took him in this physical form of the flesh and transformed him into another place. He was he never died. He just was taken up to be with the Lord. That's ridiculous faith. Faith that was too high to where it was just God. He matched. He came in accord with the faith that made everything visible. Oh my goodness, some of us are just trying to get faith for the next for the next meal we're gonna have, or faith just to keep shelter over our head. We got faith for, for clothes on our back. You know, some of us we got faith uh, for 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 the little things. When Enoch was on that level of faith that was beyond everything that God's faith helped us to see. 
His faith went to another dimension. Help me, Holy Spirit. So, so faith precedes life. So in our life, to be walking in life, we have to be walking in faith. Knowing that my faith is to be greater than everything that I can see, everything that I can touch. I'm not going to believe that more than I believe God. I'm not going to believe what the doctor said more than I believe what God said. I'm not, I see God, so. I'm not going to believe what my wallet says more than what God says. I'm going to believe what God says no matter what it looks like, no matter what the situation is. If God said it, it is. If God said I called you to be great, then you're going to be great. Even if my flesh says you're not great, you're nothing. I'm going to say I'm great because God said I am. I am who God said I am. Oh, when that devil comes to depress you, to oppress you, make you feel like you're not going to make it, make you feel like you should give up, make you feel like you should take your own life, you say, I will not, I will stand on what God says. Who God says? I am. Point number two. No. No. Act, I'm going to add that. No, act, expect, persevere, receive. <coughs> we look at this passage of Jesus. The synagogue leader, which tells us that there are many uh, religious in Jesus' day who did believe in Jesus. All the Pharisees didn't want him dead. There were some Pharisees that saw him as quite amazing. So this synagogue leader wanted Jesus to raise his daughter from the dead. The daughter died. And Jesus, he believed if you just touch her, she'll come to life. So Jesus is on his way to touch the daughter of the synagogue leader Help me, Holy Ghost. And while he's on his way, a lady with a bleeding condition. Now, if you understand this context, blood is would make you unclean. You're not even supposed to be in the public. You're supposed to be isolated. But she believed if I just touch the hem of his garment, Matthew is showing us the expectation of those who have faith in Jesus. No matter what the consequence would be, no matter if I just touch, there's not going to be any consequence because I'm going to be healed before they can even catch me. <laughs> so she's crawling through a crowd to just touch the hem of his garment to be healed. This is an amazing, uh, not only uh, action that's based in an expectation with, which comes with a cost if she's caught of strict discipline of making others unclean having blood exposed. But she gets to touch the hem of his garment and is made whole. So there's an action, an expectation, and a, a against an opposition, and a receiving of what she believed, what she knew from the beginning she would receive. Y'all remember with, with Brother Bruce when I said, and I don't know him other times where I said, this is going to happen. With one time, I'm not even going to touch you. This is going to happen so that you know that God did this. I'm telling you what's going to happen before it happens. What is this? This is me knowing my God. Knowing that I'm acting in accord to his will. And, and, and then I have an expectation. And then there's a reception. I receive what I already knew. Why? Because the same God who created everything that I see is the same God who is going to do what he says he's going to do. And when you're walking in him, you know that. 
The good question that we are always ask in the midst of our challenges, in the midst of our problems, is the God who created the heavens and the earth, this same God, is our problem too difficult for him to fix? If it's cancer in the body, is this cancer bigger? Is this harder for God to deal with this cancer that could be in the body than it was for him to create the heavens and the earth? If my money is not adding up for the things that I need, is it harder for God to create the heavens and the earth or to add some money to me according to his will and his timing? Okay, so whatever the situation, to put a roof over my head, to have food in my belly, clothes on my back, is it harder for God to create the heavens and the earth or is it harder for him to, to do this, this little, to fix this problem that I have? And when we think like that, our faith ought to be in line with him and seeking to know what is his will and how should we act. But it should be, you know, like that woman knew, if I just touch, like that synagogue leader knew, if you just touch my daughter, she'll raise from the dead. Now Jesus goes to the synagogue leader's house. After this lady persevered, remember, she is not the subject here. She, in, she comes in on, on another person's blessing, actually. Jesus is not even thinking about her. To our knowledge. He may have known, but he's going to the synagogue to do this house. He tells her, your faith. He didn't say my faith made you whole. Your faith made you whole. Your knowing, your acting, your expecting, your persevering helped you to receive. Then he goes to the synagogue's leader's house and uh, the people are out there playing the music, mourning, doing their different stuff because the daughter's dead. And Jesus said, what, what are you doing? She's not dead, she's sleeping. And they began to mock Jesus and ridicule him. So what does Jesus do? He put the whole crowd out of the house. He had them all get out. I'm going to tell you, some churches are going to be so much better when leaders start just kicking people out. Just get out. You don't have the expectation. You don't have the faith. You don't. You don't have the love. You don't have just. Just at least for this season, so God can do what God needs to do. So He put the crowd out, and then He did what the man said. He touched her by the hand, and she got up. That's what the Bible said, and she got up. And the people were amazed and they spread. The news spread throughout. So we saw this man, this synagogue leader, again, the opposition. A lot of the synagogue leaders were not in favor of Jesus at this particular time. All right. But this man went against what many of his peers because he don't care about what they think. Do those people's opinions, are they going to bring his daughter back to life? I promise we get too worried about what other people think about us. That causes an opposition to our faith. You worry about what this person, is that person going to fix your situation? Are they going to bring peace to your mind? Are they going to fix your troubled situation? If all they have is this, you don't need that when, when you're in a big mess. Help me, Holy Ghost. So against the opposition, he did all of those things and he received what he knew he would receive. Now, we, we, we go on and there's some blind men, two blind men who are following Jesus, have mercy. And Jesus said, do you believe that, that, this, that, that I can do this? And they said, they believe. Now, here's a good one. Many of us read this and we don't get it because they believe and Jesus made them whole. He opened their eyes. They were able to see. And Jesus said, tell nobody <laughs> that this miracle has happened. Don't tell. What do they do? What do they do? They tell. Now, <laughs> faith and obedience, they go together. We read it and we don't understand because it's hard not to tell when God do something. I mean, many times we, we want to tell. We should be testifying. Mm -hmm. But what Jesus understands is the opposition. 
every person's miracle came against opposition. See, as it was in the beginning, and you have to get this, God's faith brought everything that we see into being. And you have to understand that the deception and the manipulation of the enemy uh, has brought it to a lot of the things that we see would come to make us to not believe. So the devil who persuaded a third of the angels to be with him has, has greatly defiled the earth and made it so a lot of opposition comes in the way of belief. And you have to understand that so it is among the human uh, group of people. There's a lot who uh, that Jesus could see the opposition that would not be good for these two blind men who were now seeing. The opposition could have been so strong that they could have blinded them again. You say, no, it couldn't be that strong. Did not the Bible say when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead that they went looking for Lazarus to kill him again? So him saying, do not tell, was for their own protection. But they just couldn't help him. The feelings of the joy and the excitement and the, uh, of, of seeing when they couldn't see. And you have to also get this. To be blind spiritually is to not walk in faith. You have to understand that everything we see, it came from what was invisible. So walking in faith should be easy if we see it. Everything we see came from God's faith. But if we're living a life without walking in faith, then we're living blind. If we're walking around saying, is there a God? And we're here. We're living as though we're blind. And this is the point of this, this miracle. That, that now they're, they're seeing for those who come into the knowledge of the Christ and walk according to faith. Now you're walking with a new sight and insight. And you're understanding how things work a lot better than many people. Let's go to point number three. Expect to fear God and live holy. You have to understand we can have faith for a lot of big things. But to fear God is the beginning of all knowledge, beginning of wisdom. And if we could have faith for healing and revealing and fixing situations, the faith of Enoch is a faith that overcomes the literal, the physical flesh. So this is a faith that says, I can beat this. With the power of God, I can overcome this habit. With the power of God, I can win. Why? Because God says I can. With the power of God, I can defeat anger. I can defeat alcoholism. I can defeat homosexuality. I can defeat sexual immorality. I can defeat it with power of God. I know it because God's word says it. I, not only do I know it, I'm acting on what I know. I'm expecting what I know to become a reality. And I'm receiving I can defeat a lack of trust in God. And see, as I say it often, it's, it's great. Miracles, signs, wonders. Jesus' faith was a, had him in complete submission to his Father. 
And you have to understand that the Father, uh, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit, they walk in complete interdependence. They're holy. And we're called to be holy as God is holy. We're called to live depending on Him. Biggest mountain. But faith says not only can God heal cancer, but God can fix this flesh condition and keep improving me and improving me and improving me so that the best of us are not stars to the crowd while defeated in our flesh before God. Faith is a real call to walk with God. <laughs> Let's bow our heads. Father, you're calling us to walk in faith. The spirit of expectation that rises above the opposition. The greatest opposition is the flesh that uses us to oppose us. But our faith in you says you've already defeated that 2,000 years ago. And in faith, we can defeat it too. Father, we pray in thanksgiving that you've already began chasing spirits away. The I can't spirit. You've chased it out of here. I don't even feel it in here. All things are possible through you. And we thank you for that. For the knowledge of that. May we walk in power. And victory. To win. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship with our giving.